since Classic, SharePoint has gotten so much better on enabling us to create beautifully, aesthetically pleasing uh, sites in general. But still to this day, it's a little bit more difficult than we would really want, especially for those of us who are not technical or creative in nature. We've got you covered though. Welcome to creating content for SharePoint sites. Today, we're gonna to take a bit of a scenario perspective, okay? Uh, and this may be a familiar feeling for you if you're uh, assigned to create content on a regular basis, but my manager has just asked me and Richard to create uh, a brand new site for the organization. This will be a site that's visited by all employees, so something similar to an intranet. However, we're just at the pilot stage, so we're trying to fill uh, logos and imagery and banners to make this site not only speak to our brand, but be generally uh, appealing to our users, right? It doesn't have to be suited and booted. We can inject some personality and some fun and some color into our sites. So we're starting here. I'm creating or I have created a communication site. I've named it Hologenix. So if I were to open my own business, that's what I would name it, but it's purely fictitious at the moment. Uh, and I've started with a custom theme. Now, of course, we are not going to cover themes today. We are going to do a short follow-up video uh, in the near future to show you how to create custom themes with SharePoint. But let's just assume that we're uh, this step is already covered for us. Okay, so let's start with our header, which is found up here at the top and also our footer, which is found down at the bottom of our site, down at the bottom right here. And Brandon, this is what you would say out of the box, basic theme that we're looking at right now. We're starting square one, and we're gonna take the users through uh, how we can give it our own flavor, our own theme. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so easy for some individuals, sometimes it's a manager, sometimes it's a colleague, to reach out and say, can you just make an image? Well, yes, we can, but sometimes it's a bit frustrating because with this new experience in SharePoint, just because it's out of the box, it's not so clear as to what sizing or mm. uh, constraints that we have to work in. So we either have to go into this very vicious cycle of creating, exporting, uploading, and seeing how it is, a bit of a trial and error, which takes a lot of time. The other side of it is we might be in an organization where we simply do not have access to a SharePoint site due to policy or governance restrictions. Right? But as creatives, we still need to be able to work effectively and efficiently. And finally, we typically have to communicate uh, what we do up and out uh, with other stakeholders to make decisions. Typically, we are not the final decision makers. However, good for you if you are. Uh, you've won the, the jackpot, as it were. Uh, but we need to be able to show the style. And SharePoint sometimes does not accommodate for this. So we're going to go through some... Uh, tips and tricks as to how to make this happen. Okay, so the first one is our toolkit. So we've created a Figma based toolkit right here where you can uh, go in and try out your design styles and decisions to make better informed decisions. So you will be able to access this. It's called the SharePoint Content Creators Toolkit. It's free to download on our Figma store. And you can utilize this to go through and create assets for any of the aforementioned areas in SharePoint. And we are going to continue to build on this as we go as well. You yeah, will see so here this we will, sorry, Brandon, I just interrupting you there, but yeah, this will take out a lot of that trial and error, that experimentation. We can uh, play around with these colors and logos and different images that SharePoint uses without even having access to a SharePoint environment. Absolutely. And that is powerful. I don't see any other area um, at the moment that allows you that kind of flexibility. So when you come in here, like any toolkit or template within Figma, we've organized this in a logical manner, included a getting started page and a change log page. So you can see what has updated along the way. Just below, you will see our components area. Starting with sites and hub logos, we've created two pages or two frames 
if we're going to use the lingo. We have on the left-hand side for each of these, the uh, working area. These are frames, descriptions, and formats that you are able to utilize to inject or insert or paste an image so that you can uh, export it in the future. This is preset to the proper pixel sizes. This is more so evident and required for our logo area as opposed to imagery and banners. We'll get to that soon. But additionally, uh, speaking to what Richard has just said uh, a couple minutes ago, is that we have the ability to see our decisions and design styles take effect in real time on the frame on the right. So just to show you, uh, we have frames hidden here. So there's a little bit of an assumption here that you are familiar with Figma. However, if you are not familiar with Figma or use a different design application like Illustrator, for example, we will also be providing a PDF export of the left panel so that you can see your constraints or the safe areas, the descriptions and formats as well. So we've got you covered on both sides. Yeah, one of the things Brandon and I really wanted to work through was to outline the formats. Um, and like he said, the dimensions, those are all preset, no thinking involved at all. So you know these are going to be safe, good, the right sizes to use on your SharePoint environments. Another thing, if you're familiar with Figma, the export settings have been set up for you as well. So we have the format. If it is a JPEG or a PNG, those are there for you. And you can choose the best file type for your situation. Absolutely. I think we've really thought, thought this through, right? Trying to reduce the technical decision making yeah. and enable creativity, right? To really bolster that. Um, so just to say one more thing is just the live reactions or the live preview on the right hand side. It is as simple as creating a very basic shape. So I'm going to put a star in my extended they have banner background image, and you will see in real time, as I click and drag this out, you will see on the right hand side how this appears. If this logo appears in more than one location, then it will take place across all of these areas. So for example, our footer has the ability uh, to have a simple and extended version. However, it uses the same logo, right? Same rules apply. So if I add a circle in here, for example, you will see that that circle appears, or and this is more of an oval, on the right-hand side, right? So it is in real time. And if you have no experience with SharePoint, no worries. You can still work safely in this space. If you're accustomed to SharePoint, for example, um, sorry, uh, Photoshop, for example, you should be no stranger to how templates are layered. We tried to organize these as logically as possible on the right-hand side. So just to give this a, a quick shout out here, the areas that you should and must uh, edit to have a proper export are those labeled with a green checkbox, right? It says insert your logo here. This is the asset or the frame that you can export. That is no problem. The things are the areas that you shouldn't update. We've included a warning symbol and added a very clear label, do not change. This is just the background to enable us to add context, add the labels and headers for you. So if you want to unlock those and manipulate this round, by all means, but for those of you who just want something very simple, stick to these particular areas that we've defined for update and you should be good to go. Another thing I really like too is those previews on the right hand side. Again, if you're not really familiar with SharePoint, some of them are blank and white and some of them like in the footer have a solid color. So you can experiment again with the right type of logo or if you want like the word mark with your logo, you can kind of get an idea of the spacing and the real estate that those things will take up in your SharePoint site. So. We hope that that will, again, speed up your time to customize your own SharePoint environment. Absolutely, absolutely. And final con call out here, of course, we are using our purple um, theme. This may not look so well when you have a conflicting color, perhaps a green or an orange, right? And you wanna communicate this out, that's no problem. You're able to go in here and update the colors as well. That is not a problem. 
However, please use the SharePoint theme generator to ensure that you're using the right uh, color blocks that are automatically generated if you are simply using the out-of-the-box theming. If you would like to share and get a copy of this Figma uh, template we use today, please visit us at uh, our community in Figma. That's at Tutelead. We will provide the link in the chat uh, and in the recording. All you have to do is open this and save a copy. Right, for those of you who do not have Figma, this is free to use Figma's license. You can sign up and utilize this right away. And again, for those of you who do not use Figma, perhaps it's a governance issue or just availability of applications, we will be providing an export of PDF style for you to utilize as well.